I have £50,000 to invest in property. What should I do? This is probably the question that I've heard the most while running Property Hub. And there are three different answers I typically give based on who asks me, ranging from slow and steady all the way through to big risk, big reward. So I'm gonna run through what these options look like. So by the end, you can pick the best strategy for you and turn your £50,000 into £500,000 and maybe even more. But to start things off, unfortunately, I need to hit you with a hard dose of reality. Because if you've just spent years scrimping and saving, you won't thank me for saying this. But £50,000 is not a lot of money. I mean, it obviously is. But in the world of property, it isn't. Given that you can borrow a maximum of three quarters of a property's value, that £50,000 would allow you to buy one property for a maximum of £200,000, which is less than the average UK home price. And in practice, it would be less than that because stamp duty and transaction costs would need to come out of your £50,000 first. So let's say you use your money to buy a £160,000 property and it ends up generating £300 per month in rental profit for you, which is a 7% return on investment and is pretty mid-range in terms of what's achievable. Cool, that's £3,600 per year pre-tax and eventually that property will go up in value. But it could be years and years and years until you're in a position to buy again. This is a trap I've seen countless investors fall into over the years. They get excited about being able to become a property investor, they do it, but then they realise that they're completely stuck and they're their life is really no different than it was before they started. So before we can pick a strategy, what we really need to know is this. Is this the only £50,000 you're ever going to get your hands on? If it is, that's okay. There are strategies we can use to make the most of it. But if this is just the beginning, you're stocking away cash and you'll have another £50,000 every two or three years, then you're playing on easy mode. In a previous video, we took you through the maths behind a simple buy and hold strategy that transforms £100,000 into a million pounds. This assumes nothing other than property prices growing by an average of 5% per year and buying more properties every time the combined rental profit and capital uplift allows you to do so. You might think, well, that sounds pretty good. I've got half that amount, so I'll just turn £50,000 into £500,000. But it doesn't quite work that way. Because you have a smaller amount of property compounding in value from the start, it will be years and years and years until it grows enough for you to buy another with the profits. So if you're going to have another 50,000 to invest in the next few years, no problem. Invest now, invest the next 50,000 when you're ready, and then you're on the 100,000 to 1 million pound track. But if it's going to take you a long, long time to save up more, like it would for most people, then you're going to need to do one of two things to make your money go further and allow you to expand your portfolio sooner. And this is how it works. Say you buy a property for £160,000 using £40,000 of your cash and a £120,000 mortgage. If that property grew in value by 4% per year, then two years later, it's worth £173,056. That would allow you to remortgage to 75% of its new value, which would be a mortgage of just under £130,000. Pay off the original mortgage and you have £10,000 in cash to put towards your next property. Well, that isn't much use. £10,000 isn't even a quarter of what you need. But what if instead you'd bought a property for £160,000 that was actually worth £180,000? In other words, you got a genuine discount, not just off the asking price, but what the property was actually worth of 11%. Then imagine it grew in value by 8% for the next two years. That would take its value to £210,000. You could then remortgage for 75% of that value which is £157,500. Pay off the original mortgage and you're left with £37,500 in cash. That's not quite enough to buy again, but add in two years of rental profits and save up an extra £500 per month on your own and you're there. Let's be clear, these are aggressive assumptions. Getting a genuine double digit discount is possible. It's hard, but it can be done. We manage to do it regularly, but that's because we have a dedicated team scouring the country and putting in offers every day. And if you do want to invest, but you don't have the time, our service might be a good fit. So check out the link in the description. But even if you do do that, you still need to convince a mortgage lender of its new value two years later, which is far from a foregone conclusion. And for 8% growth, you need to be buying in the hottest of hotspots at exactly the right time. Again, we've shared how to do this, but it's not something that's just going to happen. So is this type of result possible? Yes. Is it likely? No. But could you use these same principles to be ready to buy again in say five years rather than two years without putting in any more cash? I'd say so.
But what if you don't fancy your chances of bagging that sort of discount and you don't trust the market to lift the value of your property for you? Well, if you've got the time and the skills to get hands on, then you can follow a different path by forcing the value of the property upwards instead. Say for example, you bought a house for £100,000. It's in a bit of a state, so you spend £10,000 on doing it up. As we'll see in a minute, you'll want to refinance again within a year, which isn't always possible with a mortgage. So let's assume instead that you'd use bridging finance, which comes with a higher interest rate and often higher fees. Factoring in those finance costs and your stamp duty, that's your £50,000 spent. Then once the work is done, the home is shiny and new, and you've welcomed your first set of happy tenants, you apply for a mortgage and the lender agrees that it's now worth £140,000. In other words, you've added £30,000 of value over and above your purchase and refurb cost. At this point, as a result of taking up the mortgage at a higher value, you'd be able to pull £35,000 back out ready for your next purchase. Again, not quite enough, but it's easier to save up £15,000 than £50,000. Alternatively, you could sell the property instead of holding on to it and make a profit of somewhere between £15,000 and £20,000 depending on your costs. Best case, that would then give you £70,000 to work with. Repeat the trick a couple of times and you'll have £100,000 in cash, which as we've already seen, is a much more comfortable number to be working with. Again though, not easy. In the same way as it's hard to negotiate a genuine discount and buy an exact the right place at the right time, it's also really hard to estimate your refurb budget right at the start, keep your costs and timings under control, and then convince a lender or buyer that it's worth as much as you say it is. Something could go wrong at any one of these points and leave you no further ahead than when you started. But this is the reality. Remember what I said back at the start, in property, £50,000 isn't a lot of money. So the only way to multiply that money is to get every pound working for you as hard as it possibly can. And as I mentioned earlier, the easiest way for you to do that is to pick a winner from the very beginning. Because if you get a good deal, then suddenly your £50,000 becomes a lot more valuable. So check out this video next, where I break down our exact process for finding and analyzing property deals.